Good day and welcome to our basic calculus class. In this lesson, you will be learning limit loss or limit theorem. It is going to be a long discussion and a lot of computations. So listen carefully as I teach you the steps in the different limit loss and theorems. These are the learning competencies that you are going to learn at the end of this lesson. So illustrate the limit loss and then you will also be able to apply the limit loss in evaluating the limit of algebraic functions. This time we are just going to have the limit theorems for algebraic functions and in the next video we will be learning different limits or let's say limit theorems or limit laws for transcendental functions such as exponential functions, logarithmic functions, and trigonometric functions. We are just going to focus algebraic functions. And again, can we be prepared for a lot of algebraic manipulations? Okay. Let's start right away the theorem 1. So in theorem 1, we have limit of a constant as x approaches to a is equal to c. So if you are going to have a constant, then the constant itself will be the value or the answer of the limit. Let us have an example. We have limit of 5 as x approaches to 4. So regardless of the value of a here, which is 4. By the way, we are going to use value of a this time, not c. So x approaches to 4, regardless of that one, still the constant, which is 5, is the answer. Another one. Limit of negative 2 as x approaches to 0. Again, if it is a constant, either it is negative or positive, then it should always be the limit. That is theorem number one. Try to remember that one because we are going to use every, lim every theorem in other theorems. Theorem number two. For any number a, the limit of the x as x approaches to a is equal to a. So if you are going to have a function of only x, then the value of a will be the limit because x alone does not have um, another uh, co-terms. So, so value of a is the limit. This is theorem number two. This example. Limit of x as x approaches to 4 is equal to 4. Simply, you are just going to hold on, transfer 4 to here, to this answer. That is theorem number 2. Another one. Limit of x as x approaches to 1 third is equal to 1 third. So again, the value of a becomes the answer, the limit. That is theorem number 2. Theorem number three, this is called constant multiple rule. Okay, so suppose limit of a function is uh, x is approaching a is equal to l, then limit of k times the function is equal to k times l, then uh, where k is a constant. Okay, let's have an example for you to better understand this situation here. This theorem number three. This is constant multiple rule. Okay, so in this case, we have limit of five of x as x approaches to three. So, if value of x has a numerical coefficient, in this case, numerical coefficient of five x is five, and then next step is we are going to transfer five to the left side and remain the x on the right side. So we are going to separate 5 and x from each other. So 5 will be on the left side of limb, limb expression. So you're going to multiply it 5 times limit of x as x approaches to 3. And then treat this one as another algebraic manipulation. This time this is Theorem number two, if you can remember, if it is uh, x, then the value of a will be the answer. Therefore, you are going, you are going to have 
limit of 3 and then you will have to multiply the 2 5 times 3 that is 15 okay that is constant multiple rule again all you need to do is to separate 5x or numerical coefficient and then this variable here and then the numerical coefficient will be transferred to the left side multiply it on the remaining expression and then apply the previous theorems this one theorem number four some different some or difference rule suppose limit of f of x is equal to l as let's say x is approaching to a and limit of g of x as x is approaching to a is equal to m then limit of f of x plus or minus g of x as x approaches to a is equal to l times m it's a very lengthy explanation but let us try to make it easy okay so here you have an entire function here this is a linear function so 2x plus 4 best way for you to uh, to find the limit here is to separate to treat each of the term in the function separately so there since there are two terms in this function 2x and 4 we are going to make it separate and then uh, separated from each other and then copy the value of a and x is up x approaching to a so it becomes limit of 2x as x approaches to 1 and then another one for 4 limit of 4 as x approaches to 1 okay and then what is the next step let us try to look again to our uh, from our previous theorems this one is a constant multiple theorem theorem number three so uh, transfer the numerical coefficient to the left side okay then multiply it becomes like this multiply it to the remaining expression 2 times limit of x as x approaches to 1 how about this one this is a constant multiple rule I mean this is a constant 4 and then disregard this uh, x is approaching to 1 so you will have 4 okay and then let us continue this one 2 times limit of x and then x is approaching to 1 so x since this is x therefore we're going to use value of a this is theorem number 2 okay so limit of uh, x as x approaches to 1 is 1 and then since we know how we were able to solve this one let us continue 2 times 1 again use the PEMDAS so that you will not commit errors so 2 times 1 that is a 2 plus 4 that is 6 therefore after a long computation you have arrived at the answer that is 6 hold on there are many more just listen there are many more theorems in our uh, limits okay so this is theorem number five this is product rule okay this time this is multiplication so limit of a function as x is approaching to a is equal to l and limit of g of x as x is approaching to a is equal to m we're going to treat each of the term again okay each of the term or let's say each of the expression that is being multiplied by each other and then multiply it just like what uh, we did in uh, the previous functions so let us have this example we are multiplying the expression x and the expression 6 6x minus 2 so the same process with what we did in the uh, theorem sum and difference sum or difference of a function of a function okay so we are going to treat each of okay each of the uh, part of the multiplication uh, x limit of x yeah treat this one as a one expression and the other one as well limit of 6x minus 2 okay so again treat each of this part here and then the other part limit of x and then 6x minus 2 other expression is multiplied to other expression this expression should be treated other way and then the other one is treated in 
uh, other uh, way but that that doesn't mean other computations okay so this one let us apply again theorem number two if it is x then uh, we will go there uh, we will apply directly the value of a which is 3 here next is limit of 6x minus 2 it's going to be a very long process this time so because uh, because it is enclosed in a parenthesis and it has a minus or subtraction this is what rule is this theorem number four sum or difference so 6x minus 2 so again we are going to treat each of the term separately so limb 6x and then another one for limb 2 okay and then always be consistent with the symbol this is minus since minus here subtraction and then always copy the uh, x approaching to a or in this case 3 so this time again this is constant multiple rule again so theorem number 3 so transfer 6 to the left side it becomes like this okay and then minus limb of 2 this is constant so regard disregard this um, x approaching to 3 we're going to use 2 okay and then you will have and the same this is um, theorem number 2 if it is x use 3 so 6 times 3 that is 18 minus 2 that is 16 times 3 that is 48 yeah see we were able to apply different theorems with this product rule it's a really long process but the key here is we are treating each of the terms separately separate from each other okay theorem number six this is quotient rule okay this time this is a fraction okay more on rational function okay this is limit of x over x minus four the same process again we are going to treat each of the expression separately just like what we did in product rule theorem number five so here in theorem number six this is quotient rule no need of reading this one because this might uh, give you uh, confusion let us go directly to the example so this since this is a rational function or a fraction then uh, treat each of the expression one for the numerator one for the denominator so limit of x Again, as x approaches to negative 2, this is negative 2, okay? Not 2 negative. That is another another, another um, idea. So, over limit of x minus 4 as x approaches to negative 2. And then use the previous theorems that you learned. This one, limit of x, since again, this is theorem number 2, x. So, negative 2, which is a, will become the limit. This is now the answer, negative 2. Next is, this is sum or difference. So this is difference rule. Okay? Difference rule. So we are going to treat each of the terms separately. Limit of x, limit of negative 4. Or let's say like limit of 4. And then subtract it. And then use another rule again. It's a lot of processes. Uh, let us have limit of x. This is x, so we are going to use the a, which is negative 2. becomes negative 2. Other one. Uh, this is constant, so let us use constant negative 4. And then simplify. Negative 2 over negative 2 minus 4. So negative 2 minus 4, that is negative 6. And then 2 over negative 6. 2 divided by 6, that is 1 third. Okay? That is now the answer for theorem number six quotient rule the same with some different product you are going to treat each of the expression separately how about power rule let us have this power rule this is more on the exponents okay so but again so let, this is exponents so power rule <coughs> so the limit of a function uh, function raised to the to a power as x is approaching to a is equal to limit of a function raised to a power as x approaches to a yeah what we did here is just 
we enclose the parent. Uh, let us have this example. Limit of x cube as x approaches to negative 2. What we did is we enclose in that flat and long and big parenthesis the expression but the power is on the outside we are cubing the entire expression of the limit limit of x is a uh, limit of x as x is approaching to negative 2 and then raised to the power of 3 okay so again we are just enclosing it with a parenthesis and then solve for it in the inside so this is theorem number two if x is the function then use the a negative two so this is negative two again so in this case uh let's say let us use positive uh positive two let us use positive two this time okay there is just there are just er errors in signs here symbols here okay so this is two and then two cube is equal to eight okay another example oh this is a long example this is an entire quadratic equation x squared minus 3x plus 5 yeah plus 5 this time we only have this first term uh, which has the power which is uh, I mean which which is the degree of our power of 2 so or exponent of 2 then since this is aligned to the theorem about sum and difference uh, in which we are going to treat each of the terms separately okay separately then we are going to have limit of x minus limit of 3x limit of 5 so separately again okay and always copy the x approaching to negative 3 or x approaching to a and then since we only have this part here of the expression which has the exponent then this is the only expression that we are going to enclose with parentheses and the rest will be solved using the remaining theories okay so this is constant multiple theory this is 3 so transfer to the other side 3 times limit of x which is again x uh, using the negative 3 so this is uh, negative 3 this is uh, negative 3 and then plus 5 limit of 5 and so on okay we can solve this uh, so on so forth okay just remember the different theorems okay but the idea again is you're going to only enclose the expression which has the exponent theorem number eight okay hold on this is theorem number eight okay this is radical rule okay radical rule what is this radical rule okay so you are going to extract square root just like what we did in exponent we enclosed everything with the parenthesis and this time we enclose everything all the expression with the radical sign okay from this to this and then the entire thing and then solve it in the inside limit of x this is x therefore we are going to use the value of the a which is 9 so square root of 9 that is 3 simple how about limits of polynomial actually this is limit uh, theorem 9 okay this is theorem 9 okay so this is limits of polynomial okay so suppose limit of a function p of x as x approaches to a it is equal to p of a the same also with the rational function as well so as long as q 
q of a or the denominator is not equal to zero. Can you remember the lesson about the domain of a rational function? If you can still remember that one, then um, you can solve easily this uh, problem here. Let us have this example. Example number one. Okay. Example number one. Hold on. Example number one, we have limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5. And we have noticed here that this is a polynomial function. Can you give more examples of polynomial functions? More examples of polynomial functions are x, 2x, maybe x plus 4, x plus 5, and so on. Those are examples of polynomial functions. I know you know the uh, more examples of polynomial functions. If it is a polynomial function, let me separate it this here from the other. So if it is a polynomial function such as this one, it is very easy for you to solve. All you need to do is to see the value of a and substitute the value of a in every x that you can see in the polynomial function that you have. No, okay, this one. We have two. So, in this case, very easy, very simple. It's just like you, it is just like you're evaluating a function. So, f of 3 is equal to 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 5. Substitute, tragut. And then, ayan, solve it, so on, so forth. Uh, this one. 3, 3 squared, that is 9, minus 3 times 3, that is 9, plus 5, that is 5. Kaya nung, why is it 5? Because you need to follow PEMDAS. 9 plus 5, that is 14, minus 9, that is 5. Okay. How about if it is a rational function? Okay. Rational function. You must always uh, think of it first with the domain. If the denominator, which is q of x, ayan, if you're going to substitute this value here of our a, it should not be equal to 0. It can be equal to negative 1, it can be equal to 1, as long as it is not equal to 0. Okay, so let us have this one. Let us substitute, let us try to test if we can substitute it directly. If the value of our domain is not equal to zero, then we can proceed. If it is not, then we cannot proceed with it. Okay? We are going to use another theorem. So, x over x minus 4. Okay? So, negative 2 minus negative 4. That is, obviously, this is negative 6. Therefore, it is not equal to 0, then we can proceed directly to substituting negative 2 to the entire expression. Okay. So, negative 2 over negative 2, negative 4, negative 2 over 6 is equal to 1 over 3. This is the simplest. Actually, the previous examples that I have shown to you, we can use uh, limits of polynomial function theorem this one this is a, the example ayan. this is limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5 we had an example of that one this one ayan. limit of x squared minus 3x plus 5 ok and we have the same answer 5 ok that's it for our limit theorems we have nine theorems and hopefully you can master in uh, in learning those theorems thank you so much and um, enjoy answering your module thank you